Welcome to Five Shot Weekly. A player goes down for the year and another player gets COVID. All that before a big match over the weekend against Jim Curtin and the Philly Union. We get into those topics and more coming up. This segment is sponsored by Thinking Man Tavern, a cozy Decatur neighborhood pub. Grab a tasty beverage from a wide variety of selections and a plate of something delicious from the menu. To go, check out Thinking Man Tavern. Welcome to the show, Five Shark Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Mark. And before we get into it, become a member of the Notification Squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button. And guys, we've started a Patreon. There are a lot of fun tiers. Join us at patreon.com slash TV, and we will see you there. But let's get right into the news, and yeah, also... You know, we are also filming this outside. If you are watching this, that's obvious. If you are listening to it, you could probably hear that uh, good old nature as well. But uh, anyway, unfortunate, unfortunate news that popped up last week. Emerson Heinemann, he tore his right ACL. And pretty much, uh, as you can surmise from any sort of uh, torn ACL, just like Jose Martinez, He's likely going to be out for the year as well. In terms of uh, the rehab and the surgery and all that, it's to be determined at a later date. So, yeah, it will be some time before we see Emerson Hyman again. And uh, it's a brutal blow because Emerson Hyman has been having a pretty decent 2021. Uh, yeah, definitely been one of our kind of best performing midfielders, I would say for sure. Yes. And, uh, you know, it leaves us... Already, you know, in a position that we were kind of pretty short because of injuries slash, uh, you know, green cards slash all that type of stuff. Now, uh, we're waiting on those type of players to maybe get back to, you know, have full reinforcements. But who do you think maybe could kind of deputize that's in-house? Um, well, the one player that I think that I've wanted to see more of that hasn't gotten a chance yet really is Hosetu. Um, You know, he's a player that we were just excited about just last season right. um, and so you know you got to figure uh, that ability is still there you know that potential that we all saw you know hopefully some of that's still there um, but I agree I mean this I'm gutted for Emerson honestly because he clearly worked his way to where he was a fixture in the 11 um, you know he didn't start every game, but he started most games. He was definitely in firmly in the rotation. Um, you know, I personally have talked about him being like an option um, out of midfield for goals and assists. You know, um, I, you know that that line breaking type of player. So uh, it is. It's unfortunate to lose um, to just lose that option. And obviously, like you feel for him personally. You know, to just lose a season of your career. Uh, I, in a in a freak accident in, in training, you know, it's just yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, tough. in between where yeah, it's the international break. That's really yeah. tough too. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, you do hear this plane. Unfortunately, sorry about that. <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, you know, in terms of some of the other options in house, uh, of course, Mo Adams, uh, you know, would be maybe kind of in terms of central midfielder wise, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, he's probably more of the backup for Santiago Sosa, I would say, anyway. Uh, but, you know, you have, uh, you know, Franco Ibarra as probably the person that maybe benefits the most in terms of playing time from this. Mm -hmm. uh, and Josetu maybe is another guy that could, um, you know, deputize. Mm -hmm. uh, Moreno, I think, maybe further forward when Heinemann is maybe pushed further forward. He yeah. would be one of those other guys. Barco as well. Maybe uh, as a younger guy, Tyler Wolf, maybe also. And yeah. so, uh, you know, there are some options, but should we go outside of the team and maybe bring somebody in, you know, a starter or maybe just like depth? What, what do you think? Now, I think probably uh, depth. I mean, you, you have a decent amount of depth there. Um, I think that if Elaine and I wants to go out and get a starter, they should focus in other positions like forward. Uh, specifically on the wings, like that's just how I feel personally. I think yeah. that um, LA United, I think, need to find an impact player in that position. And so, in terms of the midfield, um, you know, that's more for me, depending on like how much room they have on the roster. You know, we know that uh, there's no roster relief, unfortunately, for losing a player 
uh, for the season. He's just going to have to be, you know, I guess on the MLS's version of the injured list, whatever that is. But, right. Uh, but yeah, and I, I think the replacement's probably going to have to be in-house and maybe just um, a, a mini shakeup in the tactics. So yeah. I do think that we have options there, but again, it's, it's, it's a blow for sure. Right. I think, uh, yeah, if it's in-house, Marcelino Moreno maybe push further back a little bit, uh, a little bit more responsibility defensively, possibly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think Hyman was our best box-to-box -box guy. Um, and so, yeah, Hosetu, Moreno probably are those guys that, uh, you know, in terms of push further back that can contribute to the attack. Because mm -hmm. Franco Ibarra is still very raw. I think, you know, you see... Uh, you know, a triumvirate of him and maybe Moreno and Sosa as uh, kind of the guys that would probably see the most playing time in the middle. But yeah, it's uh, if we brought in some guys, uh, some guys, yeah, it's if we brought in two guys, that'd be incredible, probably. And then maybe like start to uh, weed off the, the guys that maybe aren't the you know biggest contributors uh, because yes you have a big transfer window right now let's make things happen there unfortunately haven't been a ton of rumors but not yet, uh, yeah, not yet anyway but anyway uh, speaking of rumors also uh, the Atlanta United third kit launch is on June 17th we are uh, full disclosure filming this on a Wednesday so it will happen tomorrow for us so we don't know what it will look like you probably will find out maybe at some point uh, during uh, depends on when you watch this but yeah uh, yeah you know in terms of those leaks there have been none <laughs> uh, which is insane yeah really nowadays but uh, yeah very tight-lipped on all of this which is incredible really mm -hmm. uh, but also the you know the team in terms of anything that they've sent out that's really it you know so this kind of orange maybe a little bit of black mm -hmm. it's uh is the maroon real like we kind of mentioned it last week but yeah there was this mock-up by conrad burry that uh yeah interesting i don't know if i love that uh color scheme if it's you know orange and maroon uh, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. necessarily uh, love that. It's kind of maybe like Roma esque a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Otherwise, still just uh, I think pick one or the other, really. I think yeah, those those colors are a little bit too close together, and not to get too technical, they are both like kind of soft colors. Mm -hmm. So I think like the black and peach, you know, I think would complement each other really well mm -hmm. um but we'll we'll have to see i mean i will say i'm a little more optimistic about it now especially uh with the announcement of uh the the event taking place at the uh, national center for civic and human rights mm -hmm. um i think with that with the color scheme of the email as well it it is it has raised my intrigue quite a bit because before you know it seemed like it was going to be that maroon color uh, you know, it seemed like they were just gonna go for a safe third kit, but uh, yeah. but something that's meaningful, I think. I, I, I think some of the assessment was last week, but something that's meaningful would really uh, definitely grab my attention. Right, and it seems like they're alluding to a little bit of maybe uh, some maybe civil rights leader uh, type of things that, that might be on the shirt. So yeah, uh, in terms of that allusion to the MLK ATL Hawks, uh, you know, jersey. This Very good. This kit rather. could yeah. be something that uh, you know kind of pays illusion or pays uh, homage rather yeah. to that as well. But yeah. we'll find out. And uh, I hear that the Hawks are undefeated in the MLK, so it might be some uh, good vibes with it as well. You know, if you know, we, if Elaine and I could get some of that, I'd be down with that. I fully agree. <laughs> and uh, yes. Anyway, moving on from that. Speaking of rumors as well, transfer rumor of the week. And uh, basically, LA United and Istanbul, Basak Sahir, have apparently joined Bristol City in the race to sign departing Leeds United player Barry Douglas. Uh, and he's a left back, 31 years old. Uh, that's according, okay, you know, the rumor anyway is according to Football Insider. But uh, his contract ends June 30th. It's an interesting rumor because, yes, he also played for Blackburn uh, in the championship last season. He was not really a Leeds player, per se, but in terms of that, I mean, he did, in one sense, still play for Marcelo Bielsa uh, while in the championship. And so, you know, does it make sense that we would be going after a player that, uh, you know, has been in a Bielsa system for a guy that's a Bielsa disciple in Hainsey? 
Um, I think that's just probably uh, a little too far removed, I think, especially with him not even really playing with Leeds last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, he the he's had his uh, number of appearances haven't been consistent over the past four years, mm-hmm. put it that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, you know, he is 31 years old. He's going to be a left back that's out of contract. Mm-hmm. You see the other teams that are interested, a team from Istanbul, another championship team, you know, so it just, uh, yeah. You know, I, I want to be respectful about the player, but with that, we're not getting a starter, put it that way. Um, I do right. find it interesting that they are looking at signing a left back. We already have a left back on loan with Red Bulls. Um, Andrew Gutman, and he's the actually, of course. And then you also have uh, two left backs on the roster right now, uh, of course, in George Bello and Mikey Ambrose. And so mm-hmm. not really something that we really need to, I think, uh, prioritize. So it is a strange rumor, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe in the case if Bello was sold, and then uh, maybe in that case, what do you do? Maybe you recall, uh, you know, call back on the loan from, uh, you know, the New York Red Bulls and Gutman. But mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, the urgency to make this type of move? Yeah, not a whole lot of sense, I think, yeah. just right now. Especially yeah. for an international as well, because oh, he's sure. Scottish. Sure, yes, yes. So, you know, we'd be wasting a spot on depth. I, yeah. I don't see it. I don't personally see it. But mm-hmm. um, anyway, so, uh, you know, but I think in terms of the kind of profile player, uh, 31 years old, not quite, but the fact that he has played in a Bielsa system is intriguing. So maybe that's where the, I think the ties come in. But mm-hmm. anyway, let's move on from that. And Lisandro Lopez, uh, of course, now former LA United player, he has returned to Racing Club. Uh, the club that he just came from, uh, obviously, there was the uh, you know uh, tragic passing of his father, and so there is that degree of he's probably wanting to be closer to home right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't yeah. quite retirement quite yet. He wanted to play this season, and so you know, uh, yeah, there is just uh, I think a complete understanding of that, and uh, we wish him the best. But absolutely. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, moving on from that into uh, uh, international duty and Copa America and whatnot, so Jose Martinez, he unfortunately uh, wasn't playing the last match for Venezuela. There were 12 players that yeah, were exposed to COVID, which uh, thankfully, it seemed like Jose Martinez has been fully vaccinated, uh, at least if, uh, you know, the kind of Jurgen Dom TikToks are to be believed in that uh, most of the team at least got one. You know, I think definitely they would probably go back and got the second one. And uh, So if he is one of them, well, maybe he was exposed, but he just, yeah, wasn't able to take part in uh, their last match. And definitely uh, it's a shame. Um, no inkling whether he's going to, you know, come back i think he's gonna stay with venezuela for the duration and like like last episode as we mentioned it could be a minute before we see him uh it might be july before we actually see him back in five stripes Mm -hmm. but um any thoughts on joseph martinez being out for venezuela maybe due to covid no official announcement no official announcement yeah (laughs) it's more like covid america i mean i just oh god it's so annoying so annoying. I mean, it, it's it's not just Copa America either. I mean, there have been players at Euros who've also been exposed, been contracting it possibly. Um, I guess, I guess it's a moment for me where you know I, I it's something that I take for granted that you know I've been able to get vaccinated. AJ has been able to get vaccinated. Uh, most of our direct peers, family, and whatnot have been able to get vaccinated at this point. And other other countries, that's just not the case for one reason or another. Um, I would be surprised if Joseph is not vaccinated, but uh, if he isn't, I hope he gets that done soon. Yeah. And other than that, I mean, you know, um, I hope the play- anybody who's exposed to possibly contracted, I hope they recover um, back to their full capacity. Because some people, you know, it takes it takes a little bit longer. So definitely. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think you saw some dip in form for some players after they, you know, unfortunately were exposed or had COVID. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. Hopefully it's just asymptomatic for most of the 
players that were affected. But yeah. uh, moving on from that, Ezekiel Barco, he was involved in two goal contributions for the Argentina U23s in the last match. He, uh, uh, in terms of the breakthrough for that match uh, against Saudi Arabia, he uh, went down the left and he cut the ball back uh, and allowed De La Vega to open the scoring. Uh, and then also he was involved in the buildup for an Adolfo Gaich uh, goal from close range. So uh, good to see from Barco. Maybe it ups his value. So you know it's one of those always a good thing, uh, especially if he's gonna be on international duty to make sure that uh, he performs. And yeah, seemingly, seemingly he's performing. Yeah. But uh, moving on from that, Brooks Lennon he uh, posted on his IG story as well this, but. Uh, there was a little story that he had met Olympic swimmer, famed Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, the uh, the goat in terms of uh, swimmers in terms of Olympics. But uh, yeah, he was in a pool in Arizona, and oddly enough, they were both in the pool at the same time. And uh, there we go. Uh, and he said that yeah, he's extra motivated after having met Michael Phelps, uh, and. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he scores this weekend against the Philly Union, but... Wouldn't be mad about it. Wouldn't be mad, for <laughs> sure. But, anyway, moving on from that to LA United 2. They play Memphis 901 this weekend. Uh, they are, of course, second in the Eastern Conference in the USL Championship. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully they can continue their good run of results. But, uh, yeah, LA United 2 have been balling out. So, you know, if... Uh, if and when uh, they come back home, definitely make it out to those because yeah, those are those have been exciting really to yeah. watch. But anyway, uh, that does it for the news, and let's get into the match preview. It's the Philly Union on uh, June twentieth, two p.m. at the Benz, and yes, it's the return of Jim Curtin and the Union to Atlanta, especially <laughs> after he called Gabriel Haynes a, an asshole. <laughs> and so, I think a little bit of an asshole were exactly words. Right. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of an asshole. But, you know, either way, the word asshole was yeah, used. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I guess it gives us free reign to, I think, uh, as supporters, to kind of go in on <laughs> But anyway... Um, yeah, in terms of the union, uh, we haven't done this on a like actual episode this season. We've kind of done uh, some of those IG lives with right. Parcero Philly. Uh, those are still on the uh, IG if you haven't checked those out. But uh, let's give a lay of the land of the union. And basically, uh, last year they were more of a play the kids, and boy did they! Uh, you know, they sold a couple players. In Brendan Aronson and Mark McKenzie to Europe, and uh, that was definitely a very, you know, I think positive for them last year, and especially uh, in lieu of playing the kids, they also won the Supporter Shield. But uh, yes, you know, of course, we played them in the CONCACAF Champions League, and they beat us on aggregate, and uh, yeah, there's a score to settle here, pretty much. On Sunday, that uh, you know, we need to make sure that they essentially can't embarrass us at home again. Because yeah, that was uh, not only one of the worst Ooh. score lines, but also some of uh, the worst like performance-wise uh, that we've seen at the Benz. But, yeah, yeah, um, would have to agree. You know, but uh, in terms of uh, yeah, key acquisitions this year, take it away, Mark. Yep, so we've got uh, Stuart Finley, a Scottish international from the Scottish League. He's a center back. Um, he, it's important that so he has the he has the pace, the athleticism to play Jim Curtin's style as well as defend in space. So it's a big acquisition for them. You also have uh, Leon Flotch, a uh, 20-year-old from, uh, let's see, FC St. Pauli in Germany, so the lower leagues, of course. Um, he's listed as a central midfielder but he can also play both fullback positions so you figure he'd be a key player in their rotation in terms of key losses of course we mentioned brandon aronson he moved on to rb salzburg and that move has proved to be a success so far for him uh we have mark mckenzie who was a center back both of these players by the way were in the best 11 um 
Mark McKenzie at center back went on to uh, gank. Uh, but yeah, so obviously bringing in Finley to replace uh, McKenzie. And you have Ray Gaddis, who, uh, you know, among Union supporters is a bit of a legend. Uh, I mean, certainly a, uh, a lifer, you know. Mm -hmm. Those players always get more, the most respect. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, holding it down right back for them for the last few years, but retired this offseason. So yeah. they've had to replace him as well and his veteran presence. Right. And so uh, in terms of the Philly Union, we've uh, seen them play against us before. But yes, they love that midfield diamond, a uh, couple of strikers up top. Uh, their strengths definitely in counter-attacking and definitely finding the space in behind as we woefully found out uh, at our right back side when uh, especially when Brooks Lennon was not able to play mm -hmm. they exploited the hell out of that and uh, yeah it's one of those yeah now that Brooks Lennon is back yeah we uh, hopefully fare a little bit better on our wings yes. but uh, yeah in terms of our series matchup uh, they have three wins, we have four wins, and there are two draws between us. Eight goals for them, seven goals for us. Uh, they have been on a three-game winning streak as well, and so they last beat Portland on uh, the last day of May, and uh, that was a 3-0 win, and so they're flying high. They're still uh, you know, in very good form. Uh, they kind of carried that kind of good form in the Champions League over to the league. They initially weren't really playing that well in the league. It's kind of just prioritizing competitions, probably. But uh, so, in terms of that, let's get into some players to watch for them. Yep. So we've got uh, Jamiro Montero, higher energy guy, kind of a number ten for them. He's going to play at the tip of the diamond. Uh, you know, he's gonna, he's one of their main talisman. Uh, Andre Blake, arguably the best goalkeeper in the world, starting in international for Jamaica. So he might actually be out for this, but uh, which bodes well for us, but uh, certainly a key player for them. Uh, and Casper Shabilko. I mean, we certainly know who he is now, uh, but uh, truthfully, he's um, he's been an important figure for them at that center forward position for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, I, was, I remember being there in 2019, in, I think it was September, early September, when they won 3-1 and Casper uh, scored a very nice goal. And of course, we saw the two goals at the Benz about a month ago, or however long it was. So, yeah. so we need to keep him at bay. <laughs> yeah, um, no more of him scoring. Points. Exactly. We, uh, I think we, we see what he's capable of and let's uh, nullify what he's capable of. Please. Yeah. But uh, getting into the injuries and availability, uh, Jack DeFries uh, was out with a concussion protocol, uh, unknown if he's still suffering from those type of issues, but uh, Il Senio also could be out as well after groin surgery, and then Greg Ranjasing, uh, knee procedure as well, will be out, and uh, Jose Martinez, apologies for that noise there, but uh, yeah, really loud truck. But Jose Martinez could be also out on international duty with Venezuela as well. And then for Atlanta, of course, Jose Martinez will be out on international duty as well. And Yuka Dom should be about, uh, you know, almost coming back, I think. So uh, it's a questionable, I think, for him. But Chop Chol, uh, with that lower body injury, he still could be out as well. And Mo Adams coming back from the hernia. Uh, probably not going to be playing in terms of uh, yeah, getting into the squad quite yet. And of course, Emerson Heinemann with the ACL injury. But the big thing here, the big thing in this match, I think, <laughs> is that buildup before it. Because Jim Curtin, like we alluded to, called Gabriel Haynes a little bit of an asshole. And, uh, you know, it's uh, after that uh, CCL match, like, you know, at... Uh, their place and so essentially you know we uh, we, we witnessed a lot of shit housing you know and a lot of time wasting a lot of you know kind of the the unsavory things that are part of the game that yes the dark arts that you do but Gabriel Hainze uh, apparently didn't shake his hand Jim Curtin had some things to say about it uh, and we'll just kind of go over it again because I think uh, it warrants a little bit of uh, kind of reiterating. But 
Uh, he said he's an incredible coach, he's an incredible player, but you can still also be a sore loser and be a, an asshole at the end of the game. I still think there's a right way. I think you should shake hands like men after the game. You probably have something to say now that I've said that, but again, I'm not going to just sit here and take it anymore. Now, uh, you know, that following week, uh, Hainsey was asked about it, and uh, he pretty much said, first of all, if I have something to say, I'll look that person in the eyes and say it. I don't need to... I don't need the press to send messages to anyone regarding the issue about not knowing how to lose. I know both situations perfectly well. I've won and I've lost a lot. Clearly, Curtin doesn't know me. Regarding not shaking his hand, I was lucky enough to have a mother and a father who taught me about respect. If he felt that way, I'd like to apologize to him. I congratulate him because he's done incredibly well in advancing to the next round. I wish him and his team the very best. So, uh, yeah. There's uh, some unsavory feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's not quite settled right. between the two uh, head coaches. But uh, yeah, there is also Jim Curtin got a, you know, congrats to him, A to your extension. So, uh, you know, fantastic for that. Uh, he is doing a great job there. But, yeah. you know, I think uh, on our end, biasly, well, you know, there's some things that we're gonna, I think, as fans, say to <laughs> say to Curtin. But uh, yeah. what are your thoughts on those? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I do appreciate the sort of uh, gentleman-like, you know, barbs back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like congratulating him, but then also being like, this dude doesn't know me. You know, like mm -hmm. who does he think he is? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jim Curtin uh, complimenting Heinsey while calling him an asshole. It's just, it's funny to me. I like I said I I would much have rather have this than just like nice quotes all the time or just the same boring quotes. Yeah. I think this is great for the league. I think that um, I think Jim Curtin has earned the right to be a little bullish mm. about his team and the job that he's done with the union over the years because I think he has done a really good job. Mm. I you know I remember again being there in 2019. Some fans weren't really all about Jim Curtin. You know, and so he's had to win over his fans. He's had to win over the respect in the league itself. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of an opponent, the Union are a pretty difficult opponent for Atlanta United right now. And really and truly, Atlanta United want to get back to where they make other teams feel that way. Mm -hmm. But right now, yeah, I mean, like Union were supporter shields winners. You know, mm -hmm. they were functionally they were first team in the East. You know, that's what Atlanta United want to get back to. So. Um, I think it's great. I think it's a rivalry that's like peaking at the right time. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of bad blood, not only between the head coaches, but also maybe a little bit between the players at times because uh, there was definitely, uh, at the bends, yeah, there were some times that uh, people got in these other faces. But it's also this. Regarding Jim Curtin, I think there's a degree of how many head coaches uh, in the league, well, I think MLS is maybe a little bit different, where, you know, you get to fail for X number of years and, you know, still be given chance after chance. And then, yes, he did prove his naysayers wrong eventually and uh, won the Sporter Shield and all that. But, you know, not many, not many uh, coaches in most leagues get as much time as Curtin. So, you know, That's fair. that needs to be said. That's fair. But, yeah. uh, anyway, so let's move on to the predicted starting eleven. And uh, for Atlanta, let's see, what do we got? Let's go through the lines together. Yes. Goos, of course. Oof. But uh, yeah, who's your uh, who's your defenders? So uh, back four, right to left, I have Brooks Lennon, Miles Robinson, Anton Walks, and George Bellow. Um, it kind of picks itself at this point. You know, you don't mess with success. I don't really know when Franco's going to get in there, but I think now is probably not the time. Yeah. Especially, yeah, uh, he got tore up against the Union. Um, I think they know uh, kind of what he's about at the moment. I think we're going to maybe, yeah, I would say pump the brakes on kind of integrating him just quite yet. Yep, yep. Uh, so I fully agree there uh, in terms of that back four. Uh, in terms of the midfield, uh, I have Franco Ibarra. I've got Santiago Sosa as that uh, guy that's shielding our defense. And then Marcelino Moreno. Uh, more on that kind of... Uh, yeah, kind of the maybe dual eights a little bit mm -hmm. more so. But um, yeah, what about you? Yeah, same. I think that uh, Ibarra will end up uh, probably helping Sosa a bit, probably helping shield the defense. Whereas Moreno, theoretically anyway, will uh, will look to pick up the ball, try to get forward, um, try to play, you know, try to feed the forwards and so forth. 
but yeah, I think especially with the absence of Hyman, that's the midfield that you go to. Right. And uh, moving to the Fords, uh, so on the left, Ezekiel Barco, he returns. So I would say he's a guy that, of course, he's one of our DPs. Like, if uh, we pretty much don't play any of our DPs and, you know, one is available, I mean, it would be very telling. Mm -hmm. uh, on the right, Jake Mulraney has been uh, earning some playing time. I think he definitely deserves to start. Yeah. And up top, I've got Eric Lopez. I do as well. Uh, you know, this is something that I'd like to see. I think that, you know, he was billed as a center forward coming in. Yeah. Um, or like a second striker type of guy that can play across the, the front three. Right. Yeah. True, mm -hmm. true. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think this is as good a time as any to give him a chance. I, I just, you're not going to win with Kubo Torres. It's going to be very difficult to win with him. It just is what it is. You know, he is a backup at this point in his career. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see Lopez get that opportunity, see if he can like make the runs off of the shoulders the way Joseph does, you know? Um, yeah, I, and that's really all I have to say about it. I mean, yeah. you know, he had he scored a really nice goal versus uh, Nashville. Cheeky and, back heel. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's showing some confidence. Yeah. yeah, let him play that center forward role. Let's see what he can do with it. Right. And especially that, too. I think, uh, you know, there is the confidence from scoring, albeit now it's been a about 20 or so days, but still, right. hopefully he's riding high on that, and yes, he's able to put the ball in the back of the net for us, because besides uh, Eric Lopez, I mean, yeah, you know, the the striker depth is just, yeah, we need to fill that. I think there definitely, hopefully, are more rumors coming up, but of course, yes, you know, in terms of our depth in-house, yeah, you have Cooper Torres, Jackson Conway, maybe Machop Cho, but yeah. How many of the guys are tested? How many of the guys are proven to be able to score right now in this league, you know, this season? So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's going to be some problems. And so, in terms of what we'd like to see the team do in this game, for me, I would like to see the team uh, fashion the chances. Mm -hmm. And if we can put them away, okay. Uh, but it's a matter of, I think, getting those chances at least in there. Uh, in and around the box, let's see, you know, a lot of chances against the Union. I'm okay if we don't put all of the chances away because knowing, yes, who's starting up top of us. But, uh, and, you know, basically if we go down, we make sure that our heads don't, don't go down. And because, um, yeah, the Union are a tough customer, but I think we can still, uh, we can get a result out of this. And, um, you know, maybe put a statement uh, if we can actually put away a couple goals. But what about you? Yeah, I agree with all that. I would also say uh, winning the midfield battle. I like that. That I think that's a must in this one, uh, especially with the union likely going to line up in the diamond. Um, you kind of figure maybe Barco has to tuck in and help uh, the midfield three so that they're not constantly outnumbered. But yeah, I think that. Whoever can win the midfield battle is going to go to a long way to deciding this match, and it's something that I'd like to see us be able to do, as long along with you know defend well, fashion chances, and all that. Yeah, this is you know like I've said before, Union are a tough test, and I think uh, I mean I'm excited to see how Atlanta United match up with them at this point in time. Yeah, and uh, let's get to the odds, and the odds have us winning actually at 44.4 percent, a draw at 31.3 and then for Philly, a 32.3%. So, you know, uh, huh, those are uh, decent odds, yeah. and we'll take that <laughs> yeah. for sure. But, uh, you know, that takes us nicely to the score prediction. Mark, what do you got? I have 1-1. One, one. Um, I, I just I have a feeling that's what it's going to end up being. I think these are probably two fairly evenly matched teams at this time. I know the last time, or, you know, the first leg, it was not even at all. Um, I would be shocked if it's that lopsided either way, really. But certainly, if Atlanta United are losing that badly at home, there would be questions to answer. So, But I'm not predicting that. I think it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel the same way. Uh, it's just it's going to be such a tough uh, you know game after a long layoff as well. It's uh, especially not knowing who's going to score. 
I mean, it's just... So, there's so many variables, especially without Joseph Martinez, that spiritual leader on the pitch. Mm -hmm. It's going to be difficult. So, uh, guys, let us know what you guys think is going to happen in the comments below. That pretty much does it for the match preview and almost the entire show, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, will you be booing Jim Curtin if you're at the stadium this weekend? Let us know in the comments below. But, guys, that does it for the show. For Mark, I'm AJ. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Yeah.